Galoof. <laughs> we'll call him Galoof then. I remember Galoof dying, uh, and mm-hmm. then all of his powers transferring to his granddaughter, and thinking that mm-hmm. that was kind of a cool twist to some degree. Uh, I remember uh, Gilgamesh having legendary epic battle music. Uh, mm-hmm. And I remember getting whatever job you're supposed to get and giving it to all four of my characters that they could just throw all of our money at X death to beat the game. That's these are, samurai, yeah. These are the things about Final Fantasy V that I remember. Uh, more of my like sort of visual story memories are actually, and you were horrified when I told you uh, about this, Zed, uh, off, off camera. Uh, the Final Fantasy V animated series, mm-hmm. uh, which was called Final Fantasy Legend of the Crystals. I don't know if this is breaking news for anybody, but there is an anime called Final Fantasy Legend of the Crystals which was like a four hour uh, or like a two hour movie, basically. It was like four 30 minute episodes. And I have uh, vivid memories of watching that with uh, my late great cousin, Jeremy. Uh, And those are all of my, Jeremy, those are all of my Final Fantasy V memories in a nutshell. And I have no real nostalgia for it. I know a lot of people really, really love the game. I don't think this will be the podcast to satisfy the people who really love and revere Final Fantasy V because, Zed, I believe you hated it. This is, without a doubt, my least favorite video game I have ever played. Wow, okay. all like Of all video games, not just Final Fantasy V. Of all video games, yeah. So uh... Uh, I hope Aiden listens to this podcast and is happy <laughs> that uh, Final Fantasy VIII is not at the bottom of, of the Final Fantasy list anymore. Uh, it's not close. It's Why? Worst oh my ever. God. Least favorite ever. The mechanic. I mean, here's the thing. I've played like half a dozen Final Fantasies at this point, right? But like so much of that knowledge that I have of how things work does not matter in this game. Yeah. They change so many of the mechanics and they make no sense. And I like the flexibility of the job system, but there are definitely times where it's advantageous to have certain jobs and they give you no warning about that. And you show up to these really difficult fights with the completely wrong jobs to be doing the fights. And you're just kind of screwed. You either have to like back up and try and grind out a job that you haven't used at all, or you've got to struggle through for a really long time. (laughs) It's the job system. What what else do you need to know? A lot of things because it's cool that you can learn skills and have like a monk who can do who can steal stuff yeah. or you can have like all of your jobs counter which is basically what i did yeah. fundamentally i got through a lot of this game by punching things uh-huh. you have 12 you have what 12 15 jobs and i would just make everybody a monk and they would just attack and counter attack over and over and over again cuz like what else was i going to do um yeah i don't know i wiped more times like total party wipes more times on this game than one through four combined. Yeah. The random encounters are so difficult. The dungeons are so long and annoying and difficult. The bosses are hard. It's really hard and complicated and like not in a fun way. (laughs) How about the story though? Does that not save anything? Or are you not able to enjoy the story if the game sucks so hard? Because I, I definitely feel like If a game is really bad, but I'm really into the story, I do feel like often the story can lift me out of a grindy game. I point to 24, the video game, the most as my my example of this, because that game is trash. But I loved those characters so much. And if you're telling me that I have to play a trash game in order to be Tony Almeida shooting an assault rifle at a helicopter, I'll do it. I'll play your trash game as long as I have to. Mm -hmm. Um, But but you won't play Dirge of Cerberus. It's a good point. Uh, I'll watch Dirge of Cerberus. And also, I would not replay 24 of the video game. This was uh-huh. me in 2000, whatever. I think like 2000, when did that come out? 24 of the video game. Uh, I, it had 2006. Yeah. And I played it right away. <laughs> it came out. I was like, uh-huh. I got to play this immediately. Um, so this, the game is just so bad that it, the story can't lift you out of it. Yeah. Nope. Not really. Um I mean, I will say Ferris is one of my all-time favorite video game characters. Yeah. Also, no question. But I can appreciate the memory of Ferris and what the game was doing with Ferris and still never play this game ever again. And I did not, <laughs> I, I didn't even try to 100% it. 
Yeah. I was just like, we need to get through this dungeon. We need to get out of here. We need to move on with our lives. Ugh. Zed, that is called self-care, and I'm here for it. Uh, mm -hmm. you, do, you do not have to 100% a game that you hate. Uh, that's yeah, fantastic. This game news. may have fundamentally changed me as a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's important. Progress is good. Um, all right, so I don't know how you want to do this. Do you want to walk me through your experience with Final Fantasy V, like talking us through the story along the way? How do you want to – how should we rip into this thing? That's a good question. Um, cause my memories of it are, you know, the wind is gone. The elements just stop, right? The wind yeah. ceases to be a thing. Well, that's like, so you're thinking of, of one actually, I think. Um, no, isn't that how, the way it, that... isn't like the start of Final Fantasy V is like the wind stops. And so the guy goes on his drag and is like, I'll be back. I'll, oh, I have to well, go yeah. see a thing about a thing. And then the wind Galoop shows up on a yeah. on a meteor, uh, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a I lot of me meteor travel in this game. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, and at some point, yeah, Galoof has amnesia for the whole first half of the game, and is like, I can't remember who I am or who any of these people are. And then he's like, Oh right, I traveled here on a meteor. Of course. Yeah. yeah. How could I forget? I remember he had a meteor ship, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I was like, well, oh, ship wow. is a strong word for the fact that it's <laughs> literally just a meteor. Uh huh. But doesn't he have uh, like a control room or some sort of lounge room in there? No. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, we have a chocobo called Boko that I called Bopo. Bopo. Um, oh yeah. Means a kiss. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, um, but you kind of just keep abandoning. You have a few animal companions throughout this game that you kind of just keep leaving places. <laughs> so they are just the, wait there for you. Are the animals akin to like the canoes and the hovercrafts mm -hmm. of yesteryear? Yes. You have different types of animals that do different types of things? Yes. Yeah, so you have a yellow chocobo, which can cross rivers, which I don't think is cano canonical, canonically uh -huh. correct. Um, you have a black chocobo that can fly. Uh, you have like one ship that is oh maybe this is three uh but the ship that you have in this game eventually can both fly high enough to go places and can sail and can become a submarine uh because sid and mid mid his grandson right uh they keep making uh improvements to your airship your airship keeps breaking and they uh -huh. keep giving you new ones yeah um i don't believe that uh there is a Sid for all seasons, but I think that there is a mid for one. For one. Yeah. Uh, although mid uh, does appear in the Final Fantasy uh, Legend of the Crystals anime, which you now have to watch, right? On the nope. stream? Sure don't. Don't you, don't you have to watch that on the stream? I don't have to think about Final Fantasy V ever again. What? I've been saving it for today. Wasn't that a stretch goal? The game is still goal? on my phone for today, and that's it. Wasn't it, it a stretch be. goal that you had to watch the Final Fantasy anime on your it Twitch? Could, it could be. I don't think I could do it on Twitch for copyright reasons, but uh, yeah. once I get my Discord up and running, we could possibly do it in, in the Discord. We hit some goals, but that is far in the future. I need a break. You're uh, getting really close to an anniversary uh, March 21st, 1994 was when Legends of the Crystals debuted. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, sounds like a great day to that watch the Final Fantasy V anime. That year anniversary. Yeah, yeah, you know? Uh -huh. uh, that is a thing that you could do. Uh, all right, so you got a lot of animals that you can fly around. And mm -hmm. doesn't the, st the story... I is there any real immediate agency to the story? Because I know that the meteor crashes... And Bart's not butts, uh, rides up to the crashed meteor and has to fight some people. And he teams up with, with, uh, with Galoof pretty quickly, uh, as well as Princess Lena, right? Mm -hmm. But like, what did they, then what's the story after that? That they have to just like go and seek out her dad who's gone on Dragonback to find the wind shrine, I think. Yeah, he left on the wind drake. We get a wind drake eventually too. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> and we are, yeah, trying to go find her dad. And in the process, ultimately what's going to happen is the various towns are basically using the energy of the crystal to, uh, in, in various places, like the wind crystal or the earth crystal, um, 
as a as a resource to like make their land fertile and green and verdant and whatever um and each time our party is going to go to those places and be like okay but you're causing a lot of instability in the climate basically and you need to stop doing this for the sake of like equilibrium of the planet because the crystal's power is going to get all used up um and the people are like no we couldn't possibly live without our fire crystal uh, there's no alternative to these natural resources. <laughs> um, and you go and you battle through these dungeons and then you, the, the crystals explode into shards that become jobs for you. Cause that's how that works. So a crystal blows up and it teaches you how to be a ninja effectively. Yep. Okay. Correct. Okay. So we're, we're trying how to get that them- any more ridiculous than materia, you know, we're- we're trying to protect the crystals, but also it's good for us if they explode because well, we can learn new skills. Well, if you're trying to protect the crystals and they blow up, then you can just have you know much e- more easily transportable pockets and satchels filled with crystals. No, yeah, I'm then actually... we don't have to protect them anymore. They're gone. Yeah, job you, job accomplished. Or you keep them for a while and then mm-hmm. you bring you bring them with you. And you've got them uh, to repair at a future date. I feel like this is actually fairly sensible. Sometimes there's one that's like up on a ledge that if you just went up two steps, you could go get it. But no, you can't. You're going to have to go get it underwater 40 hours later in the game. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. How does uh, Ferris come into the the picture? Um, Because you you get get together with Galoof and Lena very quickly. Yes. Um, And then... and. And I don't remember the full story with Ferris. I know that they do sort of like the Shakespearean uh, like mm-hmm. gender bending thing with Ferris, but I don't remember the full the full picture behind it. Yeah, I'm trying to get to. So Ferris is a pirate. Yep. Um, they crash in the. Ship. Ferris is a, is a pirate with purple hair. Uh, yes. So like, I knew that Ferris at the very least would be extraordinarily your shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ferris is a pirate with purple hair who eventually is like, I'm just not cut out for this princess stuff. I'm much better being a pirate, which is literally something I said at the Ren Fair. They put me in skirts one year and then yeah. they were like, oh no, this was a mistake. And then I played a pirate for the rest of the time I was at the Ren yeah. Fair. Yeah. Um, so I relate strongly to Ferris. I think Ferris might be uh, a genderqueer character here. It, I'm always looking for them here in Final Fantasy. Yeah. Um, yeah, we meet Ferris at the maybe at the ship graveyard, but eventually we go back to the um, the Pirate's Cove. And that is where we, or Ferris is resting in the castle, I think. Um, and Bartz and Galoof both go in to check on them. And then they like get little hearts above their head. And they're like, oh my God, right. Ferris is so beautiful. And right. I'm like, uh-huh, I see what's happening here. They're not going to be gay. Ferris right. is going to be a woman. Um, and eventually you do get that reveal. And I was like, yeah, I clocked that pretty early, but Ferris is awesome. There's a highlight on my channel. Uh, if folks are checking out the Twitch, um, it's, it's a two minute clip. It's not a big commitment of like my favorite thing that happens in the game where they're battling somebody and like ground is falling away and Ferris jumps across the, the ravine and then falls down a mountain and then climbs back up makes a rope bridge out of nowhere and then goes and like punches this this person that they're fighting and i'm like yes ferris can do this whole game by herself she doesn't need any help she's got it bart's is like clueless not quite as bad as as uh cecil but like still not great (laughs) not as endearing as cecil right no also not yeah 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 Yeah. cecil's got the edge it's just like cecil's got the purple hair as well uh so Mm -hmm. that's that's in cecil's favor too uh, yeah Bars is just a dude he's yeah just who a... Do- he's just a dumb kid <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i don't remember Bart's having like a, an especially strong story but i that could be like this is very unfair of me because i don't have immediate recall on the story itself what i what i i was doing some reading on it and isn't it that like all of your party are descendants of another sort of like warriors of light situation they- yeah, that locked called- it, that locked an evil like world uh behind like a dimensional door or something yeah so they sealed away x death uh, my X-Death- mortal enemy of X-Death- my life x death is an incredible name though x death is that there's just like ah oh, man we got to come up with a bad guy for this game yeah. what do we want to call him x death 
all right, yeah. sure. Like they don't even try to make it a name. They don't try no. to like make this a like Sephiroth or Golbez mm -hmm. uh, or like names that you could imagine in a fan. They're just like X Death, as in was once dead, now yeah. is not X Death. <laughs> uh -huh. Easy, got him, nailed it. Uh, uh, some of the best music in Final Fantasy is like the X Death, uh, uh, like theme song, which yeah. I do love. I hate X Death. I love his music. X um, isn't X Death like a sassy boy? Am I remembering that right? Yeah. Isn't X Death like sort of petty AF? Yes. Yeah. Um. So what happened was, uh, the Dawn Warriors, I believe they're called, which was Dawn. Yeah, the Dawn Warriors Dawn. Uh, sealed away X Death in the Void thirty years ago uh -huh. um, from from the Meteor Planet where Galoof was from, uh, but sealed him away here on on the the world that we're in now. And one of those Dawn Warriors was Bart's father. Bart's has never known his father, right. so he realizes that he is a descendant from Galoof's world as well. Right. Uh, so he's an, he's story. another. It's another uh, secret alien protagonist, much mm -hmm. like Cecil. Yeah, Final right. Fantasy likes those. I know. Yes, yes, yes. Big fan. <laughs> yeah. So X Death was sealed away for thirty years, and then destroying these crystals also destroys the binding of X Death. So he is now released, and it's Gilgamesh who wants X Death released, and we've been helping out Gilgamesh by breaking these crystals. Yeah. So what's up with Gilgamesh? Gilgamesh, obviously, a uh, mythological figure who gets transposed into the Final Fantasy world. Uh, Gilgamesh is going to pop up in a bunch of different capacities throughout Final Fantasy. You encountered Gilgamesh for the first time, I believe, in Final Fantasy VIII. When Cipher uh, right. uh, Cipher kills Odin, and then uh, Odin's sword goes flying, and Gilgamesh catches it, and now you've got a Gilgamesh instead of an Odin, uh, uh -huh. which I always thought was super super cool. But people who love Final Fantasy V, I think, really swear by Gilgamesh as a character, and it's mostly uh, I think it's what is it? Battle at the Big Bridge is the name of the, the Battle at the Big Bridge. Yep, yeah, there's a big yeah. bridge. Yeah, is that <laughs> yeah, that's uh -huh. a that's a that's a pretty epic number. Uh, that's really really yeah. good. The music in this yeah. game is pretty good. It is. It's definitely better than the music in three. Um, not quite as good as the music in four. I would yeah. say. Um, yeah. So you fight Gilgamesh a bunch of times. He's kind. He keeps showing up everywhere that you are. The battles with Gilgamesh aren't too bad because ultimately he's always just going to leave. Um, he just runs away eventually. Yeah. He's like, can I you, got other things to. He's like, this is fine. I got other things to do. Can you? Can, yeah. He's like you giving up on one hundred percent. It's like no, uh -huh. I don't need. I don't need to complete this battle. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm good. Does Gilgamesh? Um, does Gilgamesh eventually like? Can you run the clock on Gilgamesh? Is there is there like a timer to it, or you have to do a certain amount of damage and then Gilgamesh dips? I think you have to do a certain amount of okay. damage. I think so. But then you're still yeah. doing a boss fight. It's just instead of killing the boss, the boss is right. It's just gonna eventually it. be yeah. over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> kind of like this game. It's gonna uh -huh. eventually be over. <laughs> uh huh. Got it. Uh. So he's like X Death's crony. He's mm -hmm. he's like uh, the toady to his to X Death Scott Farkas to a Christmas story it up, mm -hmm. um, but does he have a story beyond that or not really? Not that I can really recall. If folks at the chat know things, you can help me out. They yeah. the people who were here for the majority of this journey know that I have like blocked out a lot of this already. Um, yeah. For folks who don't know, this journey culminated in a 14-hour stream to beat the game. Right. Because I just wanted to be done. So this uh, is, this is yeah. So I know that you did lots of really long streams surrounding Final Fantasy V. Yeah, well, I had what? COVID. I wasn't going to work. I had nothing else to do with my time. What Was it like, uh, were these, these like grindy streams? You know, can you describe the streams and the substance of the of the epic final fantasy 5 streams i don't think i did until the end really i don't think i did a whole lot of active grinding not doing other things for the game do you There's level just... up characters or you level up jobs in in 5 both okay 
Um, so you let your characters continue to level up, but each time you do a job, you're starting at level zero for that job. Yeah. Um, and then you can eventually master it, which then means you can use those skills uh, with other jobs. Or at the end, as a freelancer, you have access to any of the skills of any of the jobs that you mastered. Okay. Um, so it's valuable to have your characters mastering a bunch of different things, which I tried to do. Um, that feels, also, that, that's the thing. And we talked about this a little tiny bit when we decided we're not going to do FF3 just yet, is that I, I don't love a job system in these games as much as I just give me the character and that character's class or give me the character mm -hmm. and the character can equip materia and I can specialize them that way um, because I feel a lot of pressure to level up all of the jobs and that's just more yeah. time than I want to spend playing the game. And I really felt that when I was starting to crack into three, which I still want to finish just so I can say that I did it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think it's fine. Is a, this is a big barrier for entry for me with five as well, though, is like I don't want to master all of these different jobs. It just feels very grindy to me. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, it is very grindy. And what happened for me was I got to the end of the game. I got to the final battle and I did not have what I needed to end the battle. Um, Ran in the chat, I think, has the accurate, like, count of how many times I died, how long I spent doing the battle the first time and the second time, because I got to a point where I was like, I'm just going to keep losing yeah. at the current state that I am in. I cannot just keep doing this fight. I'm not going to win it. So I had to, and there are no, Oh, this is another thing that drives me crazy about final fantasy five. There are no warp tiles in these dungeons. Okay. And you don't get teleport for quite some time. And when you do, so you have to backtrack. It's time magic. It's not white magic. Time magic is its own separate thing in Final Fantasy V. Sure, I but remember it's also this. it's like time and space magic, which doesn't totally make sense to me. But so I'd be you'd have to be a time mage or have time magic equipped as a skill to be able to teleport out. But you can't teleport out of the final dungeon. So I had to backtrack my butt all the way out of the final dungeon to go level up the jobs that I needed to level up in order to properly defeat the boss. And then it still took me another, however, oh, Rand just dropped the stats in the chat. Yeah, I oh, see Mike, it. I see Mike it. did, yeah. Yep. I spent a total of over five hours, I think, fighting X-Death across my two attempts at the end of this game. <sighs> wow. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of time against the miserable and damaging to my boss. mental health. Yeah. yeah, not great. I'm glad that that's in the, in the rear view. I forgot that you have to fight X-Death a whole bunch of times, too. No, twice. Uh, Only twice. That's still a bunch of times, I feel you like. You do it once at what feels like should be the end of the game. Right. That is in the walkthrough I was using. I remember checking in. One I saw I saw that game. you would I I had seen that like you were fighting X Death on the stream. It's like, all right, sweet, they're at the end of the game. That seems like a relief. And then yeah. I saw like the next day I was uh like I was working, I got like the Zeds on Twitch alert and I went to check out your Twitch. And you were fighting X Death again. I was like, wait, but you just did that. And yeah, then I looked it up. I was like, oh, yeah, we you have to. X -Death. No, we didn't. <laughs> you have to fight X Death a whole bunch of times. Yeah. Um, that's tough. Uh, yeah, the, the fact that you have to do uh, a, a couple, that, that a lot of the magic that you're accustomed to from the first you know, few games of the series and even your exposure to seven and eight and maybe the activation of sense memories of nine, even at this <laughs> point. Uh, Cause I know that you, you played that before we started doing the podcast to begin with um, that five definitely, you know, categorizes these things in ways that are probably complicated. Cause you just, you'll have to like switch jobs back and forth probably to do different things. Yeah. Um, so it's maybe just like not a convenient way to play. One thing in Five's favor is once you buy the magic, anybody has access to it if they have that skill equipped. Yeah. So whereas in my in my challenge run of one right now, I have to buy a spell four times so that each of my white mages can have it. In Five, you buy fire one time, and then anytime somebody can use black magic, they can use fire. Yeah. Uh, so that is streamlined and I wish was always the case. 
I know that does it's not super logical. Like you, your character should each individually be learning these things. Yeah. But that one part made it a little easier compared to other Final Fantasies. Yeah. Um how do what happens to to Galoof? Uh I don't remember how any of this goes down other than uh it didn't emotionally impact me at all because I'd already been through Tella. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like, it's like a, a weak sauce, um, attempt at, at, at a Tella 2.0. Yeah. I don't, I, I honestly don't super remember either. I remember it's, it's another one of those, like, I'm going to sacrifice myself so that you all can continue doing the journey that we right. get so often in these games. You have, um, is is it like there's there's the tree that you have to you have to like go through the tree to go to the alternate universe or to the to the void or something like that right there's a void there is a void but the void is like a big black hole on the map that you go to because they suck a bunch of the towns and things into yeah. the void um, but there's one specific void where you can go get into the void um, but you also spend some time with Galoof on Galoof's planet because you he goes there and then you travel by meteorite after him. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. Something happens where his granddaughter gets captured. His granddaughter gets captured. Kryle. Cry is that her name? Kryle? That's her name because I've met Kryle in Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, is it the exact same character? Or is it just uh, a tribute to Cryo? No, I think it's just a tribute to her. Yeah. Um, but you do I've I've known a Cryo for a while because of Final Fantasy fourteen. If you had placed uh if 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 a Turk came to me and put a gun to my head, uh and told me yes or no, Cryo is a playable character in a Final Fantasy video game, I think I'd die. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't survive that. Encounter. Well, that's dark. I think I would be killed by the Turks. I don't Aww. think I'd make it through that. Kryle is the name of his yeah. granddaughter. K-R-I-L-E. Don't recall that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do remember that you end up playing as her as sort of the, la the late stage, uh, aha, switcheroo. You thought that you were safe with all of your characters, but Galoof and dies. Done. <laughs> yeah. And I and I guess, yeah, he goes after X Death, who's captured her, and he dies uh fighting X Death and then gives his abilities to Cryle before the final dungeon, I think is is right. Um uh, I like, well, so I like once... that as a twist. I think as a twist, like that's not a bad idea of like we're giving you four characters. You have four playable characters. It's not a robust cast, it's a small cast, tight cast. You would not expect it's a four party system. You don't expect that you're going to have to be down to three or that we're going to replace the fourth. There are a couple of other games that do something similar to this uh, that I don't want to touch on in case the day ever comes that you play any of those games um, that like, I don't mind that like structural idea, but uh, I guess I just never was emotionally hooked into it enough to like really care. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she inherits Galoof's powers um, and she's like, I'm going to come fight with you. And she's a kid. Like the other, your other characters are also like not super adults. But she's, she's seven. Like, she's like a child child. She's, yeah. She's, she's Final Fantasy she's five Rita. years old. Yeah. 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 Uh, but she has all of, you know, you've, this character has been taking away, taken away from you whose jobs you've been leveling up and you've ostensibly been like taking care to like make all these skills really useful. And then they're like, nope, Bye. But at the very least, they do let you transfer all of those over to your new party member. It's not like two where you keep getting these new people, or four rather, where you keep getting these new people, but they're way under leveled compared to the rest of your party. Right, right. Um... Um, you do only have three characters for a while because once you've you know saved the planet, you go back to the castle and Lena stays there because she's the princess and the chancellor doesn't want her to leave. And so she's busy being a princess and uh, you as Bart's have to go find Kryle, who's like hiding out on a balcony somewhere. Yep, yep. And then the two of you leave and it's just the two of you for a little bit. And then Ferris comes and meets up with you and is like, yeah, I'm not doing that princess shit. I got to go like fight and like, be, you know, be a brawler. Um, and then it's the three of you for like 
a significant period of time and being down a character is is brutal because they do not make the game any easier just because you have one less person for damage output yeah that sucks uh, and also one less person to like sponge up damage too right right yeah yeah uh, so the distribution of that is going to be ruthless, uh, I imagine. Mm-hmm. X-Death eventually turns into Neo-X-Death? Oh, my God. In the in the final battle, yeah. Uh-huh. In the final battle, you beat X-Death again, and then he becomes Neo-X-Death, and yeah. you've got to do a whole second part of the fight. And something that happened for me, and I don't know if this was just a glitch in my game, was the first time I was trying to do it, I would save on a little save spot that they have in the dungeons where you can like tent and save. And I would do that and I would check and I would show the the stream. I'm like, look, all of my stats are full. You all see this. And then I'd lose and we'd go back to the save file and my stats would be down. So I was draining resources, getting myself back up to full health every time I lost which was no good either. Yeah. And there's a really long cutscene before the battle that you that I couldn't skip because my quick save was was messing up. So like it was just misery on top of misery on top of misery. Oh man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we were 8 hours in and I think I finished like my first battle with X Death and I was like, "No, I am not waking up tomorrow having to play this game again. We're going until it's done." And there's also an 8 minute video on the stream after my stream cut out and I didn't know cuz of course it did with this game but there's just like eight minutes of me at like almost <laughs> two in the morning just like uh, talking like a lunatic I'm like, thank you all for being here i can't believe we got this far is there a world outside of streaming is there anything besides final fantasy 5 i uh, don't know that's how i feel about uh, podcasting sometimes so i get it yeah yep <laughs> Yeah, I can relate because this grind uh, has been ridiculous. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. So uh, uh, I don't wow. recommend anyone plays Final Fantasy V. People love it. There are so many people who love Final Fantasy V. Like, absolutely adore the game. Ugh, um, nope. uh, I think it may, part of it's got to be when you encountered it versus when you encountered other games in the series, too. Uh, I think there are people out there who really love the job system generally. Um, I cannot speak to the story piece of it at all. I think there are people who feel like Final Fantasy V is a more sophisticated story than Final Fantasy IV. I can't weigh in on that with any authority. Zed's making a face, though. (laughs) Yeah, I don't particularly feel that way. I mean, I think the stories of all of 1 through 5, to a degree, share a lot of similarities of, like, we are four chosen children, for the most part, who are going to go save the crystals, restore the crystals to grace, protect the crystals, um, the warriors of light. And so those uh, the overarching elements you could kind of describe, I think, all five of these games slightly similarly. Yeah. Uh, you could certainly describe have a generic description and be describing any of these games. Um I don't see five as being more sophisticated than four personally. I, and I am trying to think. I would say like, four sounds like the one that would stand out the most. You've got a big yeah. sprawling sort of like game, game of Thrones style ensemble of characters. You know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people to track in four. Yeah. Well, and the relationships are so specific and deep and unique to each of the sets of characters in four in a way that they're not certainly in one and three where you're just like an avatar for your whole party of four people and it doesn't matter who they are um but i think also for for five in a lot of ways it's just like yeah okay we're here uh and and ferris is like yeah come on let's do this and bart's like i don't know but like the relationships (laughs) the relationships between the characters are not terribly specific yeah uh okay uh and then uh galoof is dead and it's barts and ferris and lena and a child against neo x mm-hmm. death and that's final fantasy 5 this is actually making me want to play the game again yeah i really think you have better things to do with your time but I, you I, do you. well i i said want to i definitely uh-huh. i definitely cannot right now uh uh-huh. but uh it's what's the deal with mid and sid can you tell me about the sid and mid of this game 
So they are often there. You find them in the library of the ancients for quite a while, which is a cool, but really confusing dungeon also that you have to do where you fight pages of books. um, And you have to like, find all these like secret passages by pulling the books that open little like holes in the bookshelves and stuff, which is cool, but very confusing. Um, So Sid and Mid are doing a lot of research and then frequently you have to go back and find them. They spend the latter half of the game in a place called the Catapult, which you access by going through a trapdoor in the ocean. Mm-hmm. There's just like a metal trapdoor in the ocean. Oh. But sure. Uh, and you go through there to them. And anytime there's a problem, you're like, I don't know, can you fix this? And you give them, there's like a cutscene of them moving really fast and they fix your ship and now it has new abilities. Um, and that's kind of what they do. They never come with you anywhere. You have to rescue Sid at some point because he's been like tied up to a, a spinning wheel uh, by I don't remember who. Um, Sounds but, like a Gilgamesh job. It, probably. Um, but you just go find him and then he's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's what they do. They do their research. They help you out. They know some things. <laughs> Give me the uh, the final party job makeup. What were what was your final party job lineup looking like? Uh, as far as you remember, if you do not recall that, give me top four jobs on the board. Um, summoner was key because ultimately, what I did when I left to get ready to try a second time, we I knew that what I needed to do was have everybody be able to summon Bahamut, which is, of course, the ultimate summon of the game, um, because that's the only thing that's really going to do significant damage against uh, Neo X death. And oh, we made a we made a command board in the channel. You have this item called the magic lamp. OK, and the magic lamp. Oh, that's how you summon- get uh, Diablos in Final Fantasy VIII. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you can summon each uh uh summon in like decreasing power order. So when you're fighting regular X death, yeah, the, somebody just dropped the command in the chat. You gotta use the magic lamp two times, two times and two times only, because then when you get to Neo X Death, who is actually four parts, um, you summon you use the magic lamp a third time and it summons Odin and immediately takes out one part of x of neo when you when you say neo x death is four parts you mean like the body is consisted of four four targets yeah got it okay got it yeah um um get get used to that that's not that's uh you've you've encountered that before though i mean that was that's that's bizarro sephiroth too Mm -hmm. uh so well lots of things that have like arms and a head Uh, or the body or whatever that's Um, nothing new but regular odin doesn't do that I had the Odin summon, but regular Odin does not take out the thing the way that Magic Lamp Odin does. But yeah. if you lose track of how many times you've used the lamp, then maybe you use Odin too soon, or maybe you're not ready to use Odin when you should. So everybody in the chat was helping me, because again, remember, I'm 13 hours in at this point, and I right. can't count to two anymore. Um, <laughs> but top jobs, definitely Summoner, Yep. Monk. Monk is just what? Just standard bruiser yeah standard monk but having counter and being able to like quadruple your damage output kind of it's counter is, counter is like really you neat. get you get hit you fight back mm-hmm. yeah. uh, magic as well or just physical attacks uh any attack to you you will counter with a physical attack got it um and that's true. If you if you master that skill, you can use it across any class. But even if you're a magic user class, your counter attack will still be a physical attack. Okay. Um, what else? Time Mage, I think, ended up being really important because why? Because you could haste your party, which is key. That's clutch. Um, I'm trying to remember. Does anybody in the chat remember anything else that I used? I mean, Summoner really became the big thing. We were just like... I was having everybody hit, hit summon Bahamut as much as possible because you, but it uses up so much MP that you have to have it split across multiple party so members. Mo- so multiple people can can do it. Yeah, because ethers are MP. also like not a thing in this game at all, or just very rare. Very they ha- they uh, have no, not at exist. all. No, no, way. they don't. Because I had are- to use elixirs to get magic back up. 
Somebody in the chat tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive there's not ethers in this game. Oh my god. Uh, why are ethers so rare? That's a Final Fantasy Reddit post. Uh, the, this well known, like... uh, yeah. <laughs> the well known spell like Petrify in FF5 known as Break. Yeah. Oh yeah, we love a break. Give um, me a and, give me a oh, break. Oh right. And so there's one you can defeat by petrifying it, and then there's two that you have to defeat at the same time, or it's gonna like use an attack that will immediately wipe out your party. Yeah. Okay. And that's well, that part sucks. of why Bahamut is so important. But one of them has a little more HP than the other one. Yeah. So you have to attack the one with more HP first so that they get down to about the same amount so that then your Bahamut attacks will take them out at the same time. It's an awful fight. Yeah. It's horrible. Uh, hardest fight you've encountered in all of Final Fantasy, and you are the Ruby and Emerald Weapon Slayer. Yeah, I'll take Ruby and Emerald Weapon any day over, over having X to do this death? ever, wow. over ever having wow. to do this ever again. Wow. Uh, I'll take that, hard mode Hell House. That sounds like trash. This. this sounds like trash. This was so miserable. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's over. So there done. you go, everybody. I did yeah. that for you. Yeah. Uh, and sorry for people who love the game and are like, oh, well, this is a bummer. But sometimes that happens. You yeah. know, uh, different games hit different, uh, different people differently. Uh, it is what it is. Is there anything else about Final Fantasy V that you want to shake your fist at while you've got the timer? Or are you ready to just, like, scrub your brain clean of it? I have shaken my fist at this game for 50 plus hours at this point, really. So You're I good. think I'm good. Your life is fine. I am glad to be done with it. I'm deleting it from my phone as soon as we're finished with this podcast. Do you want to do it live on the podcast right oh, now? Should that I? Could be should fun. I do it yeah. live? All right. So Zed is going for their phone. Here's uh, my phone. Zed is holding here's, up their phone. Here's the save file with all the time counts. There's the save file. Hold on, hold it up. So 48, 48, 48, 55. Yeah. Oh, and you have a yeah. five minute file as well. The five hours. Yeah, there's oh, a there's hours. like seven save files on here. I don't uh -huh. I, I kept like touching the wrong thing. But remember do you wanna, also Do you want to say any kind of ceremonial words as you uh as you delete this from your phone? Is there Well, but remember also that the 4848 <laughs> doesn't mm -hmm. count all the times I had to start over. Of course. Yeah. So that's a way undercount of how much yep. time I spent playing this game. Probably closer to 60, would you guess? Oh, at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. At, at least. Yeah. Because uh, there were okay. so many, so many times the whole party wiped out. Uh -huh. So many. And not just yep. in the final and not just in the X death fights. Um, so what are you going to do? Are you, are you, are you going to delete individual files or are you going to no, de I'm... delete the game? I'm going to delete the game. The game is okay. going to go. Okay. okay. So okay. hang on. Okay. Let me just move it over here. All right. So make here. sure it so can have its, Zed... its very own, its very own screen. Yeah. There's Final so... Fantasy V. There's you in the reflection of my phone. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah, going so Zed has away. moved the icon, uh, edited remove. home screen. Zed has remove, remove app. app. Zed is hitting remove app. Now the delete phone is trying to make app. sure that Zed is sure delete about it. App. Are you positive? Zed double tap. Triple tap Woo! deleted Final Fantasy V from their phone. Ferris, it's I'll done. see you in another life, brother. Everybody How do you else, feel? Did that feel good? Again. Was that it did, did that feel, feel okay? Good. Yeah. It did feel good to get it yeah. out of my life. <laughs> yeah. Uh well Yeah, that was a time. Good. That was a time. It's good you did that because you're gonna need to make space for Final Fantasy VI on your phone. Uh mm -hmm. coming your way very soon. Uh, coming to the Final Fantasy podcast whenever it comes out. I hate that it's not uh, that we don't have a release date yet. It makes planning yeah. this thing difficult. It's a struggle. Um, I wish we, we were just... like, we'll finish five and we'll go yeah. to six, but we won't. <laughs> I guess it would have been nice if we could have just like traveled through time and like get to Final Fantasy six. Should have, have that... uh, leveled up our time, Mage. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting idea, uh, time travel. <laughs> time travel generally speaking time travel is an interesting idea but yeah. specifically speaking for the purposes of what you and i do which is ostensibly podcasts about final fantasy but we could open that up a tad mm -hmm. uh and podcast about jrpgs classic uh generally speaking and classic if, classic dash general <laughs> If if uh -huh. if Square is going to take their time giving us Final Fantasy 6, why don't we like
time travel and dimension hop to a different franchise entirely. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that idea? I think I think it might be time to do that. All right. So how about this? The Final Fantasy podcast is back, baby. <laughs> Uh, and we're not going to wait for Final Fantasy VI because there is another RPG of this exact era that is a perfect sidebar for this moment in time. And if you hated Final Fantasy V, and if that experience sucked so hard for you, you deserve a treat. You deserve a <laughs> reward. You deserve to play one of my all-time favorite games ever. We're going to play Chrono Trigger. We're going to yes. do Chrono Trigger. We're doing the Chrono Trigger podcast. It's happening. We are going to Guardia. We're going to the future. We're going to the prehistoric crazy times. We're going to oh. we're going to Zeal. We're gonna meet uh, Luca and Magus and Frog and Robo and Ayla and all of these incredible people and Shala and Lavos oh and goodness. all sorts of other names that are gonna make sense to you. As we go through Chrono Trigger starting next week, the podcast, the first Chrono Trigger podcast coming your way next week. Uh, Zed, what is uh, your personal hype levels for Chrono Trigger looking like right now? I'm excited because a lot of people have asked me to play this game. They're like, are you going to, it's, you know, like the start of the like uh, bad movie trailers or how it should have ended trailers. Um, Like, are you going to play Chrono Trigger? Are you going to play Chrono Trigger? You should play Chrono Trigger. You would like Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Yeah. so it's I'm I'm good to go. We did make that a sub goal on the channel, and I have since purchased the game, so it's ready to. What are go. you playing it on? Uh, my phone. Uh, are checked. you Are you aware that you can hook up your controller to your phone? You can do what, this. Which define your play, controller? Your, your PlayStation Four controller. You will be able to do that. You'll have to figure out how to stream that properly, but that's a thing you can for sure do. You can Amazing. play Chrono oh, Trigger dream. on your phone no using your PlayStation mode. Four controller. They don't have the tap option God bless. on God the bless. Chrono Trigger iOS version, if that's Yeah, what you're it's just playing. a Bluetooth thing. That's not a problem. Yep, yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Mike in the chat said it might be going in chronological order. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't uh, want that to go amiss, get missed on the podcast. Oh. He's very hype. I think a lot of people are excited. Um, and uh, EPLP, another Josh, points out uh, that Chrono Trigger is still a Square Enix Yep, it is. So it is. We're still it w- in the world. We're still in the world. Uh, this was a Square Soft at the time. Uh, Square comes out with Chrono Trigger uh, a year after Final Fantasy VI, if I'm not mistaken. So we are uh, skipping forward in time a little bit. We'll come back and we'll pick up Final Fantasy VI when Final Fantasy VI is available to us. But doing Chrono Trigger at some point in time was always something that I wanted to make sure that we do. Like, I kind of have my holy trinity of things that we got to do on the Final Fantasy podcast. Chrono mm-hmm. Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy IX. Those things have to happen. Yeah. Uh, anything else is gravy. Uh, so Chrono Trigger had to happen. We will do it now. Uh, not like right this second now, but next week now is when we'll do it. We'll do that as an episodic podcast. We will figure out exactly what that looks like. I've started playing it again. Um, yeah. My yeah, just to get back in the hype mood because I have to refresh my memory of it a little bit. One of the things that's awesome about Chrono Trigger, and we'll talk about it more when we do our first episode, is just how customizable it is in a lot of different ways. That really what you're doing is you're you're hunting for endings. Um, you know, the the game can end uh, in... Uh, I don't know what the what the total number of endings there are for Chrono Trigger, but it's a lot. It's like somewhere in the late teens, if not in the 20s, of different endings. So it's going to be a, a really fun game for you to, to play and replay. I think you're going to love the characters. The story is relatively simple. The characters are pretty straightforward. Um, but there is some time travel loosey goosiness that we have to chart. Uh, I think a lot of it is just going to be good vibes. Uh, I think... I think <laughs> For me, it's really hard not to have a great time with Chrono Trigger. And if you enjoyed Final Fantasies 1 through 4, which I know you did, it's hard for me to imagine that you're not going to enjoy Chrono Trigger. Great. Yeah. Love Uh, that. Yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, 13 different endings. 13 different endings to Chrono Trigger. It's still a lot. There are various versions coming on a couple of them. I don't even know what that means. I have no idea what that means as well. (laughs) Uh, but I'm really excited to find out. I'm really excited to dig back into it. Uh, so Chrono Trigger is going to be our February Final Fantasy podcast. Uh, it's Final Fantasy adjacent, Zed. 
Mm -hmm. uh, close close enough close enough we are uh, you're expanding gonna, you're gonna be playing that on twitch people are gonna be able absolutely. to watch you playing chrono trigger at twitch.tv slash hard rock hope yep absolutely 100 percent Twitch.tv slash Hard Rock Hope. Check that out if you want to watch Zed crush Chrono Trigger, which I know you do. Uh, you'll get to uh, hang out with uh, some of my favorite characters in any video game. Uh, they're so simple. They're just so wonderful. <laughs> the character designs are so great. The music has been stuck in my head. has been living rent-free in my head since we decided we were going to do this. Um, it's one of my... Uh, there's, there's a lot of different... The, the music of Chrono Trigger is so good and so many people have done so many great covers uh, and there's a lot, there's like a, an acid jazz Chrono Trigger cover album. Uh, Amazing. There, there is one that's just like super chill Chrono Trigger cover. Uh, it's just, the the score is just exceptional and it's some of my favorite walking music. Uh, so nice. I'm really excited for this world to be uh, to be put on your radar. So add Chrono Trigger to the Fire Emblem and White Mage Monday lineup. That's mm -hmm. happening over at twitch.tv slash hard rock hope. Support Zed, support small streamers. Yeah. Right? This is what we want to do. So make sure you're checking all that out. Twitch.tv slash hard rock hope. Give them a subscribe, smash that subscribe, and come back next week for the start of our Chrono Trigger podcasting adventure. Uh, Zed, anything else? Uh, I think that's about it. Um, if you want to check me out elsewhere, I did the Harry Potter reunion special on YA yeah. over in the Patreon feed. Of Man, it would be really, Patreon feed. be really fun if you did more stuff like that. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That It'd would be, be cool pretty cool if, you, if, if we did a deep dive into Harry the entire series. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, and last week I was on the Euphoria premiere recap. Also I heard I haven't watched recaps. I haven't watched Euphoria season two yet. I hear it's nuts. Oh, it's so good. It's yeah. so I mean, of course it is. Euphoria yeah. is incredible. Um, you have to be in the right be like brace yourself, be in the right headspace to watch it. It is yeah. a lot. It's always a lot. Um, but I think it's excellent television. It's really rare, incredible storytelling. Um, go check out Euphoria. Check I watched Peacemaker yesterday. Uh -huh. I loved yeah. Peacemaker. I'm so into it. I'm really Ever excited. Ever since you told me that Eagly is finding his light, I I have not been able to stop watching Eagly just like tiptoe a little bit closer. That's exact because that's he's like, oh no, not quite. Haven't <laughs> yeah. hit my mark. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah as yeah, as someone yeah. who has done lighting design, <laughs> that absolutely killed me. <laughs> killed me. Yeah, you should all uh, check out yeah. Peacemaker if you haven't yet. Although again, uh, that is also uh, not. It's for the also fame, a lot. Not for the faint of heart. So funny. Yeah. So great. John Cena is incredible. He's Everybody insane. on the show is doing a great job. So go yeah. check out the uh, everything is super feed to catch Peacemaker coverage. And you're doing a million other things, I'm sure. Um, uh, I'm all in who just showed up in the Twitch chat <gasps> saying, I'm looking for Rudy. Chrono Trigger news. I'm looking for good news. Uh, <laughs> well, we've got good news. We're doing it. We're doing the Chrono Trigger podcast. Says Chrono Trigger is nice comfort food. Soup, salad, and a half sandwich. I think is it a stew? Sounds, I think that it's, uh, well, if that's comfort food for you, then sure. Uh, <laughs> It is a little bit of a cosmic gumbo, I would say, about Is Chrono stew Trigger. too controversial to be comfort food these days? Uh, depending on who you ask. Depending, uh -huh. on, depending on who you ask. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, get on the wings of time. Chrono Trigger coming your way next week on the Final Fantasy Podcast. Until then, everybody, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
SWB audio capture, not registered. SWB audio capture, not registered. SWB audio capture, not registered.
Hello? Oh, you can't hear the music. That's annoying. How about now? Now can you hear the music? I tried not to leave you guys in silence, but it was I was doing many things at once. How was that? How are we feeling? How's everybody out there? You are in a work. Okay. Well, I'm glad you were able to catch the podcast. Um, people in the chat, talk to me. We can do one of two things. We can. Uh, uh, we can play Fire Emblem. We can play Chrono Trigger. Because I do have it downloaded. So you all who are here right now, you let me know what you want to do. We'll do a poll for five minutes and see what the results have to say. Okay, sorry that technically that was a little chaotic. Uh, hopefully next time it'll be cleaner. <laughs> we tried to do it better ways. It didn't work. <laughs> so that was a bit of a laggy lag fest, but here we are. And I can still hang out for another, like, hour and a half before I have to get ready to do my day. So you guys tell me what you want to play, and we will play something for the next while. Um, sound Sounds are back. Sound redeems are back. Sound alerts are back. All of those things are back. Uh... <laughs> If my chat is still working, are my bots alive? Hello? Oh, you'll do that one. You won't do this one. There we go. Okay. Uh, great. Who's out there in the world right now? I think we'll start a new stream once we pick the game so that I can do a new live alert with the game for people who weren't interested in the podcast. <laughs> Although maybe all of you are lurking because no one is voting in the poll. In which case, I'll just pick. Which is also fine. Uh, I am gonna, I would say trigger, but I'm not sure you will get the random views without having Chrono Trigger in your title. Right, Fire Emblem for that alone. Well, that's the thing. I, but I'll start it either way. I'll start a new stream. Um, but I have had a very long day. <laughs> I am very small, and I have no money. So you can imagine the kind of stress that I am under. Pair a PlayStation controller to your Apple device. Mm-hmm. With your controller turned off, it is not off. I don't know how to turn it off, actually. Uh, let me use the other one. That was fun. Good, I'm glad. Okay, hang on. Press and hold the PS and share buttons at the same time until the light bar begins to flash. Oop. Oh, I found it. <laughs> okay, that wasn't hard. Ooh, that's a pretty color. I haven't seen this. It looks red on the stream, but it's like a corally color in real life. It's nice. Okay. Well, the controller's connected if what we want to do is play Chrono Trigger. Is Mike still here? Mike Edwards, are you in the chat? change my vote to Chrono Trigger then. <laughs> we could do Chrono Trigger Tuesdays for sure as a start. Uh, 
All right, let's do it. We we talked about it. We hyped it up. Let's do Chrono Trigger. I voted in self-serving manner so that you don't pass me in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Well, keep in mind, Ran, there's no way I'm going to finish this game before I go away. Um, and I'm not going to be playing it while I'm gone. So you will certainly pass me because I will have to be streaming either Chrono Trigger or uh, a Steam game um, that I have in mind or or, or Final Fantasy um, while I'm away. Took another nap, but you're back now. Hi, Gia. Um, we're done podcasting. We're going to start playing Chrono Trigger, it would seem. Um, so I'm going to stop this stream and start a new one so that the tags are right. Uh, so I will be right back. <laughs> 